Hey y'all, this is Cindy and I'm the Tireless Tangler. It's so nice to have you back with me this week. Last week I did a video tutorial on using Inktense gem or Inktense pencils as a bottom layer for Zen gems or Doodle gems. Um, when I finished the tutorial, I posted it to our gem Facebook group uh, through Vitruvian Art. Uh, that's Amanda Rose Rambo's page, um, and um, I asked them uh, to watch it and give me some feedback on it. And so what I'm going to do this time is try to use some of that feedback I got and um, to address some of the issues that they brought up. Um, for the most part, they were very kind, but um, um, one of the things they mentioned was that my highlights had tended to have a very strong, uh, sharp line around them, and uh, they were absolutely right. And so what I did in the last week was play with it a little bit and see uh, what I could do um, to make that go away. Now, um, what I found was that by using um, Prismacolor or um, Polychromos pencils um, as a base for the highlight uh, before adding the ink tints made a much softer edge and it um, creates a barrier. Um, Prismacolors are wax base and that means that the agent that binds the color into a pencil form is a wax. Um, polychromos pencils, um, these, have an oil base um, binding agent, but in this case they both work the same. Um, if you put the white pencil over where you want your highlight to be, it tends to soften the area and barrier and make a barrier between your ink tense pencils and your highlight which softens it tremendously and leaves you to worry about the rest of the gem and um, I was glad that I was able to come up with something for that because it's they're so wonderful for this that I would hate to have to scrap the project <laughs> okay so we're gonna start with a sherbet lemon this is one of my favorite gem starters in the ink tense range um, it has a beautiful yellowish green color when activated and so it makes a perfect starter for a nice green gem. Now even if you put ink tints over where you put your um, white pencil, it's not going to matter. You're going to be able to wipe it off just like I did the color on this one. I hope. <laughs> that didn't turn out so well for me last time. All right. So there's our first layer, and we're gonna go in with some apple green. And I'm gonna go right over the top of it, but I'm gonna stop before I get to the area where the highlight is so that there is a small area of just the sherbet lemon uh, there around the edge. Um, we don't want it to get too, um, too, too, we don't want too much pigment in that area. That was also a mistake I made last time. All right. This is Hooker's Green, which is my favorite um, mid-range uh, green in ink tints, um, especially for this particular um, job of doing gems. So we're just going to pull that up just a little bit to define this area a tiny bit. We're going to add some more at the bottom because I really like to um, use a lot of color down at the bottom. Okay, the last one I'm going to use is a mallard green, which is a very blue green, you can tell. And uh, the reason I do that is because I love to finish this particular color set off with my Prisma colors, and I like to use the peacock green in there. Uh, it really makes a nice... Um, rim around this um, to really give it depth and pop the gem off the page. All right, so, and again, with that, a little goes a long ways. All right, so, um, as we see here, 
I did not have a clean aqua brush when I started and I got that one a little messy. So make sure you squeeze some water on your aqua brush before you get started and make sure your brush is nice and clean. And you wanna get a little more. If I've got water on here, we'll see. And you wanna work your way down from the highlight. Use your paper towel a lot. Uh, one other thing you should be aware of when you're uh, doing things like coloring pages or even some of the less expensive coloring books have this problem. You, even with colorless blenders, you will run into problems where the lines in the book, the printed lines, will smear just like that your color. And hopefully you can work it back off, but not always. One reason you should draw your own gems. <laughs> okay. So for this demonstration, it doesn't have to be perfect, but look how gorgeous the mallard green and the hooker's green mix. And you can see why I say a peacock green is going to be a really nice finish for this gem. Now I can already tell I'm going to need to get a different aqua brush out because we are not flowing very well with water. And these lines are really making a mess. I may try this again without the coloring sheet, not because it's not gorgeous, but because it's becoming problematic with this paper. I didn't have this problem with the watercolor paper. Okay, I found one of my Derwent brushes. Let's try this a little more. Now I have found that when I re-wet um, ink tints, if there are any pockets of pigment that uh, haven't been activated, say right around the edges or something, those uh, will um, activate when, you, when they are touched with water. So if you are putting a second layer over, Make sure that you've got all of your pigment activated before you go on with your next one. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Um, it does have some of these little flaws where the line's smeared, but I think we're gonna be able to fix those with pencil when we go in. So let's go ahead and put our colored pencil on, because I know you were waiting for me to get to that part. Okay. So I'm doing uh, this gem with um, Prismacolor. This is my very small little apple green, one of my favorite colors. And I try not to get too close to my highlight with these, but in this case, because of the smears, I'm gonna wanna put down a little pigment here so that it doesn't look quite so tacky. And we are listening to an arabesque, I believe, by Debussy. Something for the music lovers and all of us. And if you think that's boring, Go for it, mute me. <laughs> All right, so just a small layer of apple green around here will really even out the color, give it a warmer look. Okay, um, I'm going to go for my favorite, which is the peacock green. And that is just such a beautiful match. Now go ahead and draw some up into the bottom of this. It's not gonna matter because we are still gonna use mineral spirits on this. There's something under this. Note to self, check that next time. Okay, there we go.
Now, let's get our mineral spirits out and take one last look and see. We can always add more colored pencil and that's the beauty of this system is that uh, you can do this over and over again. Okay, so the way I do um, my mineral spirits is um, I use a tortillon or paper thingy. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> and when it gets dirty, I don't bother with a color for each. I just use an old emery board to take off the color. Now when you're done, you do want to wipe it off because the color will stick to these. And then I just put my clean one in here. And I know that's terrible, but it's how I roll. All right. Now let's just smooth this out. Ah, oh, pretty. This must be Bach. Or Mozart. Somebody tell me the difference. I don't know. Bach wasn't crazy. <laughs> he was more repressed than Mozart. Hard to imagine. Okay. That's not so bad. Okay. So, now, if you want your edges to be more defined, you can come in with some more of the same color and make it make the depth a little darker. But what I like to do is pick a nice um, dark blue. Let's see if I can find one. I believe I have a cobalt. Cobalt blue hue and a Copenhagen blue. I think I'm gonna go for the Copenhagen. It's a little darker. And just work your edges real gently. Um, anytime you need edges with um, colored pencil, the safest way to go is, if you're using green, the safest way to go is blue. Sorry, I had to change that. So my arms don't bend that way. Okay. You wanna be really careful not to let it intrude too much into your highlight. But you can see what just a tiny bit of this around the edge does for you. Well, I can. and you'll notice I didn't get any more mineral spirits. It does evaporate off your tortillon in time or paper thingy. Thank you. <laughs> That's very nice. I'm pleased with the way that turned out. You'll notice that I left the center clear. This is your first layer of sherbet lemon on the Prismacolor. You've got the apple green underneath, but then we did a little apple green Prismacolor on top, or ink tints, I don't know. And then um, peacock green around it. I should not do these videos in the middle of the night.